In my career, I have developed business mantras that have driven how I build and engage quality teams. One of my early learned mantras was to always engage and socialize through its value. For me, this mantra cements the idea that it should be easy and expected that QA is engaged and involved at all levels. This foundation, along with a career of experiences, has shaped my view of the role we as human testers can and should play in our organizations. I believe we need to resurrect, reclaim, and redefine manual testing. In doing so, we reconnect with our core mission, hone our craft, and showcase our value beyond testing just the delivered application. And I get it though, it's not always that easy. At times, we've been up against negative perceptions of QA, skepticism, lack of advocacy, and sometimes even annoyance at our role as manual testers. Like me, I'm sure you've heard this before. Manual testers aren't technical enough. Manual testers aren't fast enough. Manual testers don't understand enough. Manual testers aren't enough. I know I have. Case in point, I was recently speaking with the CTO of a small startup, and after brief introductions, he started to apologize, saying he wasn't sure if our conversation would be much value for me. He said, we don't have a QA team, our developers do it. Human brains are expensive and manual testing isn't really efficient. Now, y'all don't know me, <laughs> but in the back of my mind, I'm like, yeah, 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 I heard that before. You know, things like developers can automate. We don't need a QA team, let alone manual testers. Manual testers aren't fast enough or efficient or technical enough. But as he continued, I found the chink in the armor. He said, our developers are great at testing the small things, the individual components they build, but they're not good at testing across the application, the integration of two small pieces, things fall through the cracks. I want to automate all the things, but there seem to be roadblocks. My response, really, that's surprising. <laughs> it was at that point that our conversation shifted and I started to challenge him on the value of quality, specifically the value of testers. By the end of our conversation, he said, you really challenged my assumptions and views on QA and quality. I realize I'm actually doing the quality function. Thank you. <laughs> he thanked me for challenging him. It was because I socialized the value of testing. I talked about all the ways testers can help. I didn't accept his expectation. Instead, I questioned it. You see, that expectation is not spiteful but it instead it is born out of a vicious cycle of low perceived value that nurtures low engagement from the manual testers. That vicious cycle continues as engineering leaders perceive value of manual testing diminishes further because they don't see engagement from the quality team. Remember manual testers aren't enough? This perceived value leads to low expectations driving the marginalization of the manual testing function to one column of the SDLC which turns into leadership believing they can replace testers with the machine, leaving manual testers feeling even more disempowered, resulting in even less engagement and communication. And then it starts all over again. What's even worse, that cycle is then carried forward with new testers. In Procta Test's recent quality report, they stated that 65% of us learn testing on the job. Chances are they're learning from other testers who also learned on the job. What did those testers learn? Vicious cycle. This means we see teams of testers that don't know their value. They are being told what is expected of them by leadership, which as we talked about earlier is a boxed in view that does not take advantage of the true value that manual testers bring to the table. What it all boils down to is what leaders believe manual testing is, is actually a distancing of the tester from the process, from the craft, from their mission. We need to resurrect, reclaim and redefine manual testing because it is not dead. Reset with your own expectations of what manual testing can and should be. Know your worth. Own your strengths. Acknowledge your value. Then bring all that goodness to the table. Once you acknowledge your value and own your strengths, we then get to put in the work on the three R's to resurrect, reclaim, and redefine manual testing. Because that's right it's not dead. You see, in resurrecting, we get, to, we get back to the basics like requirements testing, actually testing, not only reading, then writing acceptance criteria or test cases, look for those inconsistencies or inaccuracies across the stories being developed. Evaluate the impact of the new functionality on the existing application 
by thinking through the workflow of the implementation. What questions do you have? Does it all make sense? Did you find that in your mental mapping of the flow, it got garbled in some way? Share that feedback. Talk to the team. Your feedback may very well have uncovered a user experience issue that you are now saving the customer from. You're saving your customer experience team, your developers, your design team, everybody. From there, we then begin to reclaim our seat at the table and our voice in the conversation. Be nosy, ask questions. Yes, even the ones you think are silly. Don't be afraid to crash the party because you bring your own treats to the party and I don't mean cupcakes. I'm talking about your value, your worth, your strength, that knowledge you gained as you honed your craft, domain knowledge you've developed through exposure, customer perspective, heart, invite yourself to the conversation. Then we get to redefine manual testing. We want to redefine how manual testers interact with their toolbox to give them more space, time, and freedom to operate as a quality advocate or coach. The big one, leveraging test automation as a tool and not a standalone test strategy. Because manual testing and test automation are not mutually exclusive. It's supposed to be a partnership between the two where manual testers feed into test automation to improve its value by driving things like the quality and priority of tests written. In turn, test automation then opens up opportunities for manual testers to provide even more user-centric value through the, throughout the whole process. Our role as testers can help to uncover and even challenge assumptions. We then take feedback from that discovery and turn it into high value test automation that frees us up to do more discovery. Manual testing is about humans engaging the application. You see, you cannot have truly impactful testing without the human because manual testers bring the heart of the business to technical conversations. And it's on us, both leaders and individual contributors to champion and operate in that truth. When you exhibit that level of excellence and engage in the conversation, it changes the narrative, increases the expectation, and you shift from a vicious cycle to a beautiful cycle. That higher expectation bolsters and empowers manual testers driving more engagement from the test team, thus empowering the testers to exhibit an even higher level of engagement and excellence. But you have to step into the conversation, own the narrative and show up. In striving for excellence, you dismiss unintentional low expectations and showcase the absolute badasses that you are. Sometimes you just gotta tell people how awesome you are. Don't sit around waiting for them to ask you. <laughs> All right, well, it's time for me to go. But I did wanna know, which of the three R's do you need to spend the most time on? What would it look like if you resurrected, reclaimed, and redefined manual testing in your organization? What guiding mantras do you have that can help you with the three R's? Thank you for your time today. I hope that you've enjoyed this test list. Toodles poodles.